Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at a few of the remaining functions that we haven't covered relating to C style strings. In particular, we're going to take a look at the functions for comparing two strings, as well as then the functions for searching through one string for either some character or some substring. So, to begin with, let's take a look at strcomp, or string compare. And there's also down here, as you can see, strncomp, which is similar to string compare, just has a certain number that it checks. And it's similar to what we covered before with like strncat, as well as then also strncopy, for how they end up naming them. So, to begin with, the major thing about these is that you get this weird output down here from these comparisons. And basically it's like this. If whatever your first one is, is greater than your second one, and it's doing this by a binary comparison of the values of these strings. So in case this string here is greater than this string here, then it will end up giving you a positive number back. And if it's the other way around, so as in case this one is greater than this one, it gives you a negative number. And if they're the same, you get zero. So it does have some limitations to it, so as that you don't necessarily figure out basically where it ends up not matching or anything else like that. And in general, what you'll end up seeing this used for is checks for zero. You're typically not going to use it to check if something's greater than or less than. Very rarely are you going to get that. But you can see down here, it ends up giving us one or negative one, basically no matter what the situation is, no matter how much one might be larger than another one by its internal representation of those strings. So that happens to be something that is important to know is that it's at least for my particular hardware and the like, and my particular implementation of the C programming language, it ends up giving only negative one or one, and that's more than likely going to be fairly universal. Not every compiler is going to end up doing the exact same things for this, but these are pretty universal traits. And then in case they're the two same strings, you can see down here this zero, that's when you get zero back. And most often, whenever you see strcopy or strncopy, it's going to be checking to see for zero. Strncopy basically is the same as strcopy. It just ends up having a limit to the number of letters you can check. So in this case here, we're checking six letters. And you can see right here, we wind up with zero, then one. And the difference being that for the first six letters, and really the first seven letters because of the space here, they're the same. It's only in the eighth character that they differ. The next important thing to note is that for something such as this, still ends up returning one or negative one, depending on whether or not one is considered greater than the other. Same as stir copy, just happens to be different in that you supply this extra argument for how many characters you want to compare. And lastly, the important thing to know is that it doesn't automatically compare that many characters. So I can put something like 50 in here, and even though you might think, okay, that's going to go well beyond my usual string amount, it will go until it encounters a null terminating character in either string. So basically, internally, it's going to have a for loop, and at each iteration of that for loop, it's going to make certain that the character in either of these strings that's going to be compared is not the null character. It also is going to then make certain that you're less than this value. So it's going to end up basically doing three checks, and only in case all three of those pass, will it continue executing, otherwise it'll fail. So, or more accurately, in case it still is true at that point, it'll return zero. And basically in case, as soon as it finds any difference, it can return one or negative one. So then, down in here, we have different ways of searching. And the main one here is stircher and stirster. And as you might guess, chr stands for character. The second str stands for string. So in this case here, we're searching for a character in a string. And thankfully, these happen to be in the same order that you provide the arguments. So you provide a string, such as far lines or bust, and then you provide a character you want to find within that string, in this case here, A. Or then down in here, you provide a second string. So basically for all these, whatever you provide in the second one is what you're searching for, and the first one happens to be a string you're searching in. So to begin with, with stircher, it just is string, character, if it can find it what it actually returns is it's a pointer to that location. So in this case here, it gives me basically whatever this string is has a spawn memory. It basically is going to return the next location in memory because that's where A happens to be. 
So basically, if I had a character pointer pointing to F, it would return that character pointer plus one, because that's where the first A that it finds is. So in case we scroll on down a little bit, you can see down here, it returns this for what we're outputting. And this just is something that I put on here to make certain that the program doesn't crash when one of these checks in here ends up failing. So down in here, you can see when we search for R, it then finds this R here. However, because of the fact that, and this is an important thing to note, it is case sensitive. So lowercase o and capital O are two different characters, and it's not going to find this O here because I gave it a capital O. So instead it returns null, or a null pointer more accurately. And this just happens to be a function to make certain that if I get a null pointer out, trying to output it doesn't crash the program and it just ends up converting it to this string here. Then in case it can't find a character such as Z, which technically couldn't do for this capital O either, it returns a null. And that is its fail state for basically any of these search functions, such as searcher and searster. Then you can also do things such as, in case I want to take a character and add a certain value into it to get another character, you can do that. Technically, this takes in an integer for the second value in searcher. So you do have to be somewhat careful about it, because technically if you were doing, say, a string using wchars, so in case for whatever reason this involved wchar pointers rather than normal chars, you could actually give it larger values than you normally could give it just with the length of a character. So that would allow you to access things such as things in Unicode and things such as Japanese language, Russian language, that use different scripts than the English language. So what you can then do is Sir Archer, which just is a reversal of searcher. Rather than searching from the beginning, it searches from the back. So you can see down here, what we have is we have up here, our lands are bust, our lands are bust. But then down here, it ends up finding the first situation of A is actually this, well, the first situation of A is this one here, and that's what Sturcher finds. The sec well, the last one is this A here. So it ends up down in this reverse one, just taking, whoops, not that, this substring here. And then for R, it finds this R near the end, and it returns that substring. Whereas up here, it found this R first, because Sturcher starts at this end, and then Sir Archer starts over the opposite end and goes back that way. Once again, in case it can't find it, it's going to end up returning null. And once again, you can do this same sort of thing. Then we hit stirster. And stirster is the ability to search for a string within that first string. So it's once again going to be very similar to our earlier stircher examples, just that we now have to basically match on multiple characters. So if I'm looking at finding or, then I can pass an or like this, but once again, it is case sensitive, so I can't pass in this or. And then if I search for A though, I can do this as though I were searching for a character and it will just go, oh hey, here's either, well, in this case here, because there isn't actually a stir R stir, it only goes from the beginning to the end, left to right. So it finds this one and then gets the rest of it. And once again, you can give it even longer strings, such as in this case here, Zelda, doesn't exist within this string, so returns null. Fairly easy, fairly straightforward, and once again, returns pointers. Important to remember that it is a pointer, not like it's some brand new string. It is still a reference into this string on the left here, so any modifications you make to it impact that original string. You can do stuff to copy it, but that's more of using stuff such as memcopy like we've gone over previously. Now down here, there's another thing, and this is this stir pbrk. And what it ends up doing is it searches for one of basically any of these characters. So in this case here, it's going to find the first instance of a, b, or c. So in this case here, the first instance is this one here, this a here. So it ends up giving us our lands are bust. Then in def, the first situation of any of those characters is a D. In case we didn't have D in there, it would end up giving us null because it won't be able to find it. Then we can give it like this whole bunch of characters here, none of which are in Farlands or Bust. Once again, it is case sensitive, so this L is different than if I did capital L. So that's an important thing to note. Or down here, give it Zelda, and this time here, it actually does find 
because of this A here, this A right here. In case, say, I didn't give it that A there, it wouldn't find anything until we hit this D right here, and then it would fill the rest of the string out. So that happens to be the general things you can do with searching. One important thing to do, and to make certain that you don't mess up with any of these in case you ever use them in practice, make certain that any of these that expect a string for one of these arguments, do not give it a null pointer or null. Because in any of these situations, if I then try running this, it's going to do this, and you can see how, yep, crashes the program. And the amount of time it takes to crash the program depends on how long you, it takes for you to access memory that doesn't really belong to you, or for the system to realize that something has gone wrong with it. Because otherwise I might have had to click that little red square there to terminate it. But that happens to be an important note. Do not put in null pointers. Fairly dangerous will crash your program and happens to be just something to be concerned about. And while there is a bit more we can do in terms of strings, about the only other function that you might want to ever consider is what is known as strlen. So strlen just happens to be a simple thing of giving you the length of some string. So this, and I can do and l, and it'll give me the number of characters in there. There is a few important things to note about strlen right here. And let's actually go with a bit of an easier example that doesn't require us counting how many A's are actually in there. In this case here, you note how it gives us three. And that's because of the fact that it doesn't include that null terminating character, which is a huge, huge problem if you try to use Sterling as basically, let's say you want to check that something happens to be less than a certain length, or if you're copying things around and you use Sterling for it, you're going to leave out null characters. So you have to be very aware of that fact when Sterling gets used. Also, the other important thing to know about it is that it can be a bit of a problem that, similar to how basically I said that main certain that things are null terminated, you want to make certain that any string is null terminated because it relies upon there being a null terminating character for it to actually output this string correctly. So that happens to be very important to note is that this will only succeed if there is a null terminating character. So if, like in some of our earlier examples of escape characters and the like, or down where we end up doing some stir copy stuff in order to not have these null terminating characters floating around, then it's a matter of we could actually have the stir len being far larger than it should be, or representing the fact that we have a larger buffer than we actually think we have. So it is useful, but it does have some limitations, and it is dependent on that null terminating character. So that's really all that I want to cover with relation to C strings. I know that there is more, and it's a fairly large amount of stuff that we've covered so far. But overall, these are things that in general you shouldn't actually be using unless you need to, because we're going to be using more powerful, more potent, and safer things to use when we get into C++ strings. So. Maybe spend a bit of time experimenting around with this. I'm going to be adding this code onto the current episode and all the previous ones dealing with this, so as that if you want to download it, mess around with some of it, feel free to. But we're going to be moving on from this, and really this is only going to come up again when we deal with C++ strings and a bit of stuff related to C strings when we get to file I.O. and streams because I'm going to want to show you both how C does it and C++ does it, because they are two fairly different ways that each have some nice utilities to them to make it a bit easier, and we'll get to that in the future. So thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.